My name is Juan Avalos. I am 27 years old, and I'm originally from San Luis Potosí, Mexico. Now I call Austin home. I have to make a three to five minute short film this semester for my directing class. The program that I'm in now is Emerging Media, where they teach you everything from film in two years. They teach you how to you know, work a camera, they teach you how to write, they teach you how to work on sets, they teach you how to direct, they teach you the big things that you need to know so you can get into the workforce and start working. I never thought I was gonna ever be a filmmaker. When I came into the new field, I thought I was gonna be a writer. Never thought I was gonna direct, so it's been a challenge. The bulk of our class today is going to be behaving very much as if Today is Juan's shoot. We're gonna pretend like this is his location and we're gonna be his crew and he's gonna be the director. We're gonna see what he wants. Shot 6.4, I want to have Francesca part of it as well because she's part of the surprise. We actually decided to keep that camera here. Realistically, how do you want a boom operator working in that space? Yeah, so this one will be more for, for sure, the last shot. The okay. boom, we're okay. probably gonna have it high and, and have it rigged. This is really the climactic moment. I'm not sure I get the how the how you want the reveal to work in terms of what he's seeing and, and how you're kind of marrying that to the impact that it's having on him. Yeah. His reaction first. Juan in particular is somebody who is very focused, very diligent. Came in, I think, with a very strong emotional attachment to some material that he wanted to pursue. And that, that's a valuable thing and that's a dangerous thing, right? Because the valuable part is it's a motivating force and it keeps you focused and it keeps you driven, which I think Juan is naturally anyway. But there's this danger to it also, which is the more attached you are to something and the, more, the longer you've been thinking about it and feeling it, the more rigid your sense of what it needs to be. So there's this balance, right? And I've seen him struggle in some of those moments because he's carrying a lot. I'm checking in our backstage casting call. We have 20 like requests to come audition for my short film, which is cool, because uh, uh, I didn't think a lot of people will do this. And also kind of terrifying and intimidating because it's something completely new to me and I've never done this before. That is the first place where you're pitching your project is getting people to be in your film. All righty, let's do it. Sounds good. That, that sounds good. Um, and so then, what I'll do um, is. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, I really love your reaction. Yes. You're really. Uh, and Shall we so seeing your recipe in your background, the, like, I know that with you, you are really kind of strange with. Uh... He had never done casting before. He didn't have as many male actors audition. We had no other options available. Jonathan was a blessing in disguise, and immediately I knew after we hung up his audition, he's gonna play that. It just was kind of really lucky, I think, by chance that we ended up finding him, and he was great. On any given semester, probably 30 plus films being made. That's a lot of films. We have a good amount of equipment, but of course we don't have enough for 30 films to be shooting at once. Thank you for uh, arranging the big order that I have. Oh, is that you? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Let's do tripods. There should be two tripods. Yeah, also, I'm not giving you all my lights. There are other students. For sure. Maybe we can just take the first page and the first, the, the second. I'm feeling, you know, confidence, nervous, scared, anxious, right. you know, nauseous. Oh, I'll be able to. Yeah. Okay. It's 6.08 in the morning. Uh, it's time to get ready. It's shoot day.
<laughs> Thank you all so very much for being super early on that Saturday worse than anything. A couple house rules. Uh, upstairs, the bedroom is completely off in the midst. The garage has the C-stand, sandbags, cables. It's just going to be the set, the set mom and make sure that y'all are taking water <laughs> breaks because I've been on sets where like we just don't drink water or eat. And so definitely if you need a break, just let me know. We'll, we'll collect the formalities there. We'll start to continue to get set up and get started hopefully. Right now we're making sure that all the settings are correct with the um, with the cameras and our monitor, which is a the Shogun Atlas. Yeah, and make sure that we are all set up, ready to start shooting. Uh, right now we are making sure that everybody has some food in them. Uh, make sure they are uh, settled into the space. We are working on setting up the first shot outside because we're going to start outside um, and we'll hopefully start rolling within 10 to 20 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, off limits. Right now I'm trying to find the Shogun. Uh, oh, it's sitting in the car right here. Oh, okay. I just put it there. Oh. I think for the first shot, if I am correct, we will be doing the scene where he is finding out that um, the uh, passport is expired. Is the passport? This story is really about the struggles of just life when life goes wrong and you can't do anything about it. It's rooted a lot in something that happened to me and to my wife, I'm kind of combining the stories. My dad had polio when he was a baby and um, because of that, he had post polio syndrome his whole life. He ended up losing his ability to walk kind of in his 50s. With his last illness, I didn't know how bad it was and they didn't tell me until it was too late. And so I found out that he was in the hospital with pneumonia in the morning and then on and they told me like i don't i think this is it i think you need to get here right away you know she went up in the plane phone in airplane mode couldn't really reach her i'm pulling out at the airport my sister-in-law calls me tells me that he passed away my heart shattered not for me but for my wife because here she is flying you know up fifty thousand feet in the air thinking she's gonna get to see her father one last time when i know it's, it's not gonna happen i didn't know um that the last time I saw my dad was gonna be the last time I saw my dad. But I knew, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm getting emotional. I knew that he, um, knew that I loved him and that he loved me and that was kind of solace. That's where a lot of it comes from and vice versa for me, my grandmother passed away. Similar situation, I couldn't go back to Mexico to be with my family. Juan kind of didn't get the option to grieve because he was trying to be there for other people. And that was really hard for him so it was my wife and my sister-in-law that made me a safe space and environment here for me to grieve. Yeah! <laughs> we got the passports. We are definitely a little bit behind. Uh, we're starting to just sit up here. Yeah. I have one. I only have one when I had two. I have no clue where I'm living. You so. got the orange one. I'm already going crazy. I know. Okay, so we're just going to have a camera here right on her so you can be here. Yeah. Uh, and then this one will be here right on him tight so you can have lights on either side of the thing here around. Thank okay. You. We're missing our camera two operator so we're gonna have to make it work today. My second camera operator texts me the night before the production saying hey I actually can't make it to your shoot day and it is kind of frustrating because we are shooting with two cameras so it definitely we need a second camera operator. I mean it, it should work just so don't worry. Do uh, you mind if I go <laughs> I take Jaren aside and I take my camera operators aside and say, hey, this is the situation we're facing today. How do we best tackle it? This should just be on the raw setting, oh. not the raw setting. Yeah, it was a little frustrating. I'm not going to lie. We come up together that Jaren is one of my ADs. So he says, hey, I can just man the second camera and we can trail between who's available to kind of take over the camera. So I was like, okay, great. We'll do that. All right. Pepitas, grandinadas, A plus B. Scene 3.1 and 3.2, take one. Action. Your passport's expired. Go, go further back a little bit. It went well. 
I usually have trouble with the sun, but it was just right this morning. We are definitely running a little bit behind schedule. We definitely have to spend Good. I just need you to uh, focus on the um, move it, pull it the other way. Oh, it's very finicky. Um, <laughs> the Shogun's being an <laughs> If I could say that there is one thing costing me the biggest issues during production is the Atmos uh, Shogun. It's losing signal constantly. You know, we're having everything set, the performance is great, everything is going perfectly, and then suddenly the camera person goes, can we cut? We lost signal, and it's just so infuriating. Do it the, the same same take, it's fine. Did you say cut? Well, okay, all right, let's do it to the top then. Um, are you ready? Running low on double A's. It happens when you have something that takes eight batteries and then three labs. You know, you kind of have to bring like, you know, like three times the amount of batteries with you just to make sure you can get through the shoot. So we're just eating into our next buffer. All right, let's go from the top. And then between those two takes, this one and the one we're about to shoot, we should be covered for the most part. Camera's rolling. Rolling. one and 1.2 Action. You know, we have students who have gone on to win Emmys. And so I get to see students um, usually at like every phase of the program. And so I've known Juan since really the beginning. He wants to be a really good storyteller, has great attention to detail. Making films is hard. Before this point, everything has been entirely hypothetical. And as long as it's hypothetical, the project can exist in your head as anything that you want it to be. And as soon as you actually start executing those pieces, it becomes real, and that reality comes with the challenges of maybe this thing isn't working out the way that I wanted to. I didn't realize I was going to have to do all of these things at once, and that can be stressful and it can be overwhelming. They get to this point where they are now, where they're facing this thing which almost seems insurmountable. Everything leading up to this point has been overwhelming. It's a new environment for me. I'm not the expert by any means, so I don't know how to address certain situations, and I'm trying my best. I've never felt stress quite like this before. It's her grand, uh, it's her father. Uh, sorry. We're looking to see if some of the clips we recorded earlier have a higher shutter speed than it should have, because we're getting a weird effect on the camera at the moment. Uh, and if it does, that could actually be a real problem. If all of this is off, then everything is unusable. Yeah, here, uh, hey, Jaren. Jaren. No, from there, uh, can you go to clip 38 on that, on that file and tell me what you see? On the one that we're doubting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's the... Technical difficulties. It wouldn't be fun without it, right? What would you be making a documentary about? I make the decision to let's shut down 30 minutes, everybody can take a break. We think that it, it potentially got switched to auto during the move. Like just a fat thumbing of controls or something like that. And the wrong one to see the vector Everything looks pretty smooth and it looks okay. So I think we are fine. Uh, we'll just continue rolling and um, we should have enough coverage with all the other shots to still be able to tell a story. Oh. Going to the film is kind of hard as I am reliving this constantly. The death of my grandmother is always there. So it's been one really tough to... It's been really tough to kind of understand that she's gone mostly because I was in the situation and I wasn't able to go see her. Um, and so it's been really difficult. However, it is the level of closure and as much as closure as I can get at the moment. I am a little more indecisive and nervous about how it's coming out, but I know I'm making the best choices with the information that we have at the moment. I would much rather be a little indecisive and try to figure out other shots that don't work than make a shot work. We're roughly an hour behind. I think we can push it, yeah, just that way. Okay, uh, can you strike it and bounce it on her face? Okay, I like that. Power hour starts now. We're gonna just try to get through and uh, continue going. Oh, time check? It's 
Uh, 12 hours. It's been, we hit the 12 hour mark uh, from when everybody was here. Room check real fast. Me too. And action. Cut. That was money. Let's go. <laughs> That's officially a wrap. Yeah. yeah. It truly does mean the world to me that you are helping me, helping to bring something that is very near and dear to both me and Fish's uh, lives come to life. It really is. Uh, uh, it's, it means a lot, and so I, I don't want to cry, but I probably will, but truly, from the bottom of my heart, I really do mean it. Thank you, everybody, so much for just being part of this production. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've officially yelled, that's a wrap, and gotten the high of getting everything done, I am going with so much momentum to the editorial process. It's work that I do by myself. It is something that I have full creative control of and I know all the elements that I need to deal with. I was able to think like an editor while I was writing and creating my documents that now it's just picking the best takes of each one to make them gel as much as possible. So I will 100% say that editing is the easiest part of my process. <laughs> okay, it took a very, 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 very long time, uh, but everything is done and uh, have it set up ready for the showing in class this Thursday. I'm very excited and nervous for the screening. My sister actually didn't know that what like the script was about and that she was kind of the character was based off of her. Frenchie is going into it super blind. She we I um, purposely didn't tell her anything. She has no idea what the story is about. It is a little nerve-wracking, but I'm also excited. It's a story that I didn't think I was gonna ever tell. Thank you all for being here. This is awesome. I'm glad we got to, uh, oh, come on, modest, modest clapping. We'll save the clap. No, no, there'll be plenty of clapping. We'll save that. So just a serious note at first. The films are all good. I don't know that there were any disasters on set. If they happened, I didn't hear about it, which, good job. That was the right thing to do. It just makes me really, really proud. You guys worked your butts off the whole time, which is not always the case. And uh, I just want to applaud all of you. Um, you know, thank you. Um, and this is really gonna be fun to watch all these finally. Yeah. We're just gonna play the movies and have fun tonight. What's going on? We made a little surprise for you while you were outside. We know how much you loved your Abwe, and we know how badly you wanted to get home, and I know it's not perfect, but we just want you to know we'll always be here for you, no matter what. brought me a lot of joy seeing the story resonate with them and also being a level of closure for them. I can see that they started getting emotional and tearing up and that's when I knew it was like, that's the whole point of this. So the fact that they really enjoyed it um, made it all worth it. Like, no matter who else sees it or who doesn't, that's already a victory to me. I am so proud of Juan. I think this is the biggest thing he's done so far and I think it just goes to show how hard he's worked. Just being able to see him from start to finish has been really great. Getting on this stage. <laughs> I'm very proud. When all is said and done, this process has been an incredible walkabout to understanding myself as a filmmaker and what I can achieve after I finish my time here at ACC. I came in knowing absolutely little to nothing, and this process has shown me both the technical aspects and the incredibly important parts that need to happen to make a film. 
and it really takes a village. So the biggest takeaways for me, again, is the importance of your crew, the importance of your story, and what audience you're gonna tell that story to. But I really appreciated having to go through this experience with the people that were involved in my project. And I wanna truly say thank you to all of them to helping tell my story.